Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our second session of Science and the Quran. Before jumping into the science verses that I know we're all waiting for, I would like to begin in what you might think is a bit of an unlikely place, which is the story of Pharaoh and Musa alayhi salam, Prophet Moses, and the sorcerers that Pharaoh brought forth to challenge Prophet Musa. This story is told both in the Bible and in the Quran, and you all know the details of the story, that when Prophet Moses claimed uh, to Pharaoh that he was a prophet of God, Pharaoh did not believe that, and so Moses showed him some of the signs, the miracles that God had given him as proof of his prophethood. And Pharaoh simply replied that you are nothing but a magician, and if you can do magic tricks, we have better magicians than you. And a challenge was issued where the best magicians in Egypt would be brought forth to basically show up Prophet Musa alayhi salam and prove that he was nothing but a magician or sorcerer, and the people were all gathered to witness this confrontation. And the story is told in many places in the Quran, and it's also a well-founded uh, biblical story. So we see, for example, in Surah Taha, what transpired. And let me summarize that the magicians came and they threw down their sticks and ropes and with their trickery and their power of illusion they made the people think that those uh, were snakes. Then Musa alayhi salam threw down his staff and it devoured what they had uh, wrought in terms of magic tricks and at that moment something very dramatic happens and these are the verses that I want to focus on from Surah Taha. First, look at them in Arabic, and then we will go to the English. And so the Quran says, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim." فَأُلْقِيَ الصَّحَرَةُ سُجَّدًا قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّ هَارُونَ وَمُوسَى قَالَ آمَنْتُمْ لَهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ آذَنَ لَكُمْ إِنَّهُ لَكَبِيرُكُمُ الَّذِي عَلَّمَكُمُ السِّحْرَ فَلَأُقَطِّعَنَّ أَيْدِيَكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ مِنْ خِلَافٍ وَلَا أُصَلِّبَنَّكُمْ فِي جُذُوعِ النَّخْلِ وَلَا تَعْلَمُنَّ أَيُّنَا أَشَدُّ عَذَابًا وَأَبْقَى قَالُوا لَنْ نُؤْثِرَكَ عَلَى مَا جَاءَنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالَّذِي فَطَرَنَا فَاقْضِ مَا أَنْتَ قَاضٍ إِنَّمَا تَقْضِي هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا إِنَّا آمَنَّا بِرَبِّنَا لِيَغْفِرَ لَنَا خَطَايَانَا وَمَا أَكْرَهْتَنَا عَلَيْهِ مِنَ السِّحْرِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى Now let's go to the English so as soon as Prophet Musa brought forth his true miracle, so down fell the sorcerers prostrating themselves in adoration of God and exclaiming, We have come to believe in the sustainer, in the God of Moses and Aaron. Pharaoh replied, Have you come to believe in him before I have given you permission? Verily, he must be your master who taught you magic but I shall most certainly cut off your hands and feet in great numbers, or other translators say from opposite sides, and I shall most certainly crucify you in great numbers on the trunks of palm trees so that you might come to know which of us can inflict a more severe and lasting punishment. And then the sorcerers very bravely answered, Never shall we prefer thee to all of the evidence of the truth that has come unto us, nor to him who has brought us into being. Decree then whatever thou art going to decree, thou canst only decree affecting this worldly life. As for us, behold, we have come to believe in our sustainer, hoping that he may forgive us our faults and all that magic unto which thou hast forced us, for God is the best and the one who is truly abiding. So let's go back to the Arabic now for a second, and let's look at what happened. The sorcerers realized that Musa was a true prophet of God, and when I was a young man, I was entirely captivated by their bravery and their heroism. 
Pharaoh obviously was not a man to be trifled with. When he says, I'm going to cut your hands and feet off, and I'm going to cr crucify you to the tree stumps, that's something to be taken very seriously, and it's obviously a very severe punishment. And yet the sorcerers were so moved by what they saw that they were entirely willing to lay down their life, their lives, and suffer a gruesome and painful death because of their newfound faith. That's how strong and profound that faith was. And when I was young, this is the part of the story I focused on. Their heroism, their display of what the true meaning of martyrdom really is, their amazing faith, their fortitude, their bravery. As I got older, I never came to appreciate that any less, but I began to focus on a different part of the story. I began to focus on Pharaoh and Pharaoh's minions and all of the common folk, the Egyptians, who were there in attendance watching these events transpire. And I began to ask myself the question, if the effect was so profound on the sorcerers, how is it that all of these other people were not moved to faith? This was not a subtle thing. And it is this focus which actually first got me interested in the topic of science and Islam. And the conclusion I came to is that the difference between Pharaoh and all of the other spectators and the sorcerers was knowledge. The sorcerers knew the science of magic, the, the how-to of magic tricks, the ins and the outs. They had studied it for years. Pharaoh and the spectators were like the rest of us when we go to a magic show. And so Pharaoh's ignorance, as well as that of the spectators, led them to miss the signs of God. What was Pharaoh's response to the sorcerers? He says to them, إِنَّهُ لَكَبِيرُكُمُ الَّذِي عَلَّمَكُمُ السِّحْرِ That he is simply your leader who taught you magic tricks. So he thought that Musa was just a better magician. But the sorcerers, because of their knowledge of magic, understood that what Musa had brought forth was not a magic trick, but was a genuine miracle. And so here, in a re purely religious story, we have a stunning example of the price of ignorance. Pharaoh's ignorance led him to miss the signs of God. And I would pose to you that ignorance of the laws of nature can also lead us to miss the signs of God. That when God asks us to peer into the creation of the heavens and the earth, if we do that and we watch like the spectators, ignorant of the laws of nature, it may seem like nothing special to us and we may miss something that would have profoundly increased our faith. And so it is with that spirit that we want to approach our journey into science and the Qur'an. What will we be doing on this journey, inshallah? Well, of course, we'll look at specific verses. We'll look at verses that deal with physics and cosmology, biology and embryology, earth sciences, among many others. But we'll also do something that is not usually done in discussions of science and the Qur'an, which is to take a general and philosophical outlook. We'll look at the issue of the laws of nature, things like the duality of energy and matter, and what consequences that has. Things like the issue of human consciousness. How does inanimate matter, atoms, carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, brought together in an orderly way, all of a sudden become conscious? So what does that mean? It means we have to get our minds clean and we have to get our hands dirty. What do I mean by get our hands dirty? It means we're going to have to take a deep and hard look at a lot of these things. It's not just going to be superficial. And I know that in today's world of tweets and sound bites, sometimes we just don't have the patience or the stomach to really 
work through some of the issues of physics or some of the equations or I, I would urge you to try to set that aside because remember the sorcerers studied magic very deeply for many, many, many years to gain the knowledge that allowed them to apprehend the miracle of God that was before them. And so let us roll up our sleeves and get ready, inshallah, to put forth a concerted effort to open our minds and to look at the nitty gritty details. And we'll start with just a couple of different examples, one using a specific verse and one dealing with a general and philosophical topic to lay the foundation or make you get a sense of how, inshallah, we're going to try to present these topics. Thank you and salamu alaikum. We look forward to seeing you in the next session.